What could be better than adorable Fae Farm animals? Dancing Fae Farm animals. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Jade Miss Gaming. Jade Mist here, and welcome to another Fay Farm tutorial where today we're going to be talking all about animals in Fay Farm and what they can do for you. Now, there are a total of six different animal types that you can buy in the game, and there are three different vendors where you can buy all of these different animals from. There are chikus and cottontails, which you can get from Erline for 200 florin. You can get Mamus and Woolly Horns from Jeremiah for 300 florin, and you can get Lunin and Spriggan from Rayglor over in the Fey World for 400 florin. Now, each one of these animals has a specific resource that you will be able to gather. Chikus will give you eggs, Cottontails will give you cotton, Mamus will give you milk, Woolly Horns will give you wool, Lunins will give you silk, and Spriggans will give you Spriggan leaf. Pretty simple, right? Now, how do you buy and how do you register your animals? Well, first off, you're going to start with your chikus and your cottontails, which are pretty early in the game. You're going to get them from Erline. Eddie, the fisherman, is going to give you a quest line to go meet his sisters, which are Erline and Loretta. Erline will then give you a quest to unlock the chikus and the cottontails. So pretty early game, you're going to be able to have some fun with some animals. You're then going to take that chiku that you just bought from Erline and you're going to take it to your chicken coop. In front of your chicken coop, there is a ledger, a little book with a feather quill. You're going to click on that ledger and that is where you're going to manage your little coop. There are six total slots that you can register your animals, so you can only have six. I tend to have three of each animal in each barn, so three chikus, three cottontails, three mamus, etc, etc. You can optimize your barn based off of whatever resource it is that you want the most of. I like a good balance, so the eggs and the cotton are a pretty good balance for me with three and three. Now, once you register one of your animals in the ledger, you can go back into the ledger and you can continue managing your barn or your coop here. You can change your animal names at any time and you can even change your barn name. To change your barn name, it depends on what you're using to control your game, whether it's controller, keyboard or mouse. If you click on right trigger on a controller, it's going to prompt you to go ahead and rename your barn. All right, so now that we have your animals registered into your barn, it's time to learn how to take care of them. When you buy an animal, you're going to notice that there is a little bar system here with three little bars that you have to fill up to make your animal happy. Once you have those three bars completely filled up, they will never go down. No matter how many days you've gone by without feeding them, without petting them, without brushing them, that happiness meter will always stay super high. But since you do buy them with a low meter, you do have to complete all those tasks. So very important, pet, brush, and let your pets out for fresh air at the beginning to raise that meter. Now, as we mentioned earlier, your pets are gonna drop you resources. In order for those resources to drop, your pets need to be fed 100%. You don't need to pet them, you know, need to brush them for the resources to drop. You just need to feed them. At the beginning, before you level up your trough, you're only going to be able to put one piece of food in per animal. I highly recommend you go back to the vendor where you bought your animal and ask them to upgrade your trough. And then you can go ahead and put in a stack of 10 for each animal. That means you have 10 days you don't have to worry about feeding your pets. As long as they're fed, they will drop you the resource. Petting, brushing, and giving them fresh air will not manipulate how much of that resource they drop. It is all generated randomly. Now, if you forget to harvest your resources one day and you expect to come back the next day with double the amount of resources, you're going to be highly disappointed because the resources don't stack in this game. You do need to go in every single day to pick up all those resources unless you really don't want them. Now, there is a way to get more resources without having to stack up on all these animals, and that's by leveling your animals. Yes, your pets can be leveled up. Breeding your animals will raise their levels. To breed your animals, you're going to go over to the vendor that's offering breeding services, and then you're going to drop off one single pet per vendor at a time. So you don't need two pets of the same kind to go take to the breeders. It's simply just one. 
Loretta is the one who takes care of the chikus and the cottontails. Patel takes care of the mamus and woolly horns. And Temael takes care of the lunins and the spriggans. Breeding doesn't cost a single thing. It is 100% free unless you want to buy charms to leave with the animals while they're breeding, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit. Now, in order to breed out your animals, their mood must be at least two bars full and they have to be adults. So like I said before, you have those three bars that you start with and you do need to get those three bars up to two completely full. The vendor will tell you when you try to go take a one bar animal that you do need three bars full, but I promise you, you can get away with only two. I've done it countless and countless of times with successful breed outs, even with colors, with only animals at two full bars. While you can successfully breed out animals that are not fully happy or cared for, the chances for a successful breed is a lot better when they are happy. So it does benefit you to go ahead and take care of them, make sure they're fed, pet, brushed, and they have fresh air. Now let's talk about the leveling system here. So animals have levels starting at three bars and they go all the way up to six bars. So when you take an animal that has three bars to the breeders, they're gonna produce an offspring that has four bars that you're gonna have to fill up to be happy and so forth and so forth. If you take a four bar animal to breed out, they're gonna give you five bars. And then a five bar animal is going to breed out into six bars. Six is the maximum that you can get. Now, what's the point of these levels? You might be asking the levels give you more resources. If you were to have a chiku that only has three bars, your maximum amount of resources that you can get from that one chiku are three. Anywhere between one to three eggs is what that chiku is going to drop. Whereas if you have a chiku that has six bars, there's a chance that they will drop one to six of those eggs. It's not guaranteed you're gonna get six, you just have a chance for that. You can get four, you can get five, you can get three eggs from a six level bar. And again, their happiness level does not affect the amount of resources that they drop, that is completely random. Now, I think it's obvious to say babies, brand new offspring are not able to be bred out instantly. You do have to wait until that baby turns into an adult and that takes two in-game days for it to be grown out. Once you have a full grown baby and you have those two bars fully content, then you can go back and take that fresh new baby and breed it out. Now let's get into the best part, breeding different colored animals. This part is the part that I have been working on very diligently. And I recently had a stream where I created an animal challenge for myself where I was trying to get certain colors for certain animals while on stream. It didn't go very well because I had a lot of technical difficulties, but if you do want to check out that stream, go ahead. It is in the cards listed here above. Now there's 14 different color variants that you can turn your animals into, which means with the six different animal varieties, you get 84 different animal varieties in total. Now you can't have 84 animals running around your entire farm. So you will have to choose which are your favorite colors and what you would prefer to have in your barns. Sadly, we don't have a tracking system for what colors we've already collected. So if you just want to keep track of that on your own, kind of like what I'm doing, that is basically all we can do. I really wish the developers would go ahead and add that to our almanac and let us check off which animal colors we've had. So developers, if you are listening, that would be an amazing feature to add to the game. Now, in order to breed out specific colors, you're going to have to leave your animal at the breeder with a specific charm while they're breeding. Both the vendors that offer breeding services, Loretta and Patel, will offer you the same exact colored charms, which are black, white, brown, yellow, tan and gray to get all of the other really amazing pretty colors you'll have to go to the fave world and talk to temael to get azure emerald lime pink teal purple and red most of the charms will require specific polished gems so definitely get ready to go head over to the mines if you've sold all your gems already and start grinding out some more gems all of the fave world colors are going to require three of each of those polished gems whereas the vendors that provide you the basic colors in the basic world you will only need one of those polished gems 
and each gem also costs 250 florin. Now, I highly recommend that you grind out some money if you need some help trying to get some money. I do have a video where you can check that out. It will get a little pricey when you start stacking up these charms. Using charms is not 100% guaranteed to give you the color that you want it only gives you a chance for you to have that color. I like to stock up between five to 10 of my charms in case so that I don't have to constantly be going back and forth adding or buying charms. If you find that your animal is not giving you the color you want and they're just going back to the generic base color, that is fine, just keep trying. Your game won't be broken if that's the case. As long as your animal is producing offspring, you're perfectly fine. Now there is a bug currently in the game where if you are not producing any animals at all, it could very well be that your game is bugged. The workaround for that that I have found, which we discovered on stream, was to completely sell out every single animal you have in the barn. Now before you sell out your animals, be sure if your troughs are fully upgraded and you have a stack of 10 food in the troughs, empty your troughs before deleting your barn. This workaround will not work if your troughs are full. So empty your food, sell all the animals in your barn, go back to the vendor and buy a brand new animal and re-register it into your barn. Save your game, restart your game and come back and your barn should be reset. If you see ghost random animals pop back into your barn, it's either because you forgot to take out the food in your trough or the game is kind of bringing back other animals that may have been in limbo from your breeding service. So just go ahead, remove those and re-register one single pet in there and it should reset itself back to normal. If you still need some help with that or you're still having any problems, there is a Fae Farm Discord where you can report all of your bugs and I also do have a Discord so if you do want to come on over and hang out and talk all Fae Farm stuff, even other cozy game stuff, be sure to check out my Discord. The link is in the description below. All right, back to the colored animals. Here's a cool nifty little trick that you can do with your colored animals. You can take an animal that's already already colored and you can breed that color using another charm to turn it another offspring into a different color but there's also a chance that the color of the parent color let's say your pink mamu you will breed out another pink mamu without a pink charm so let me break that down so if you want a barn full of pink mamus you could take one single pink mamu breed it out without a charm and there's a good chance you'll get another pink mamu and you didn't have to waste a pink charm now of course you do have to get that pink mamu first so you will need a charm for the first one but then you can continue breeding it out over and over and over to have a barn full of pink mamus there is a chance that mamu will revert back to its generic color for their offspring so just be patient if you are trying to get one of the same color in your entire bar now chances of getting colored animals are way better when your animals are fed pet, brushed, and received fresh air, but it's not necessary. You still can get colored animals without them being fully happy, but it's highly recommended that you do make them happy to increase those chances. Now there's one more charm in the game that we haven't talked about yet that does not have anything to do with colors, and that's called the pillow charm. Now, according to the almanac, it gives a chance for increased happiness, which could be a little vague. So let's break that down and see exactly what that means. Pillow charms have a chance of raising offspring's bar level by one extra bar. Additionally, it will always fill up an extra bar of contentment at the beginning. So let me break that down. In other words, an animal with three bar level is bred with a pillow charm. Instead of breeding out to a four bar level like normal, there's a chance that it will breed out into a five bar level. Same thing applies to those that have four bar levels with a pillow charm. There's a chance that that one will turn into a six bar level. It's not 100% guaranteed. Nothing with the charms are guaranteed. They only give you chances. The only guarantee with this pillow charm is that the first two bars of whatever level you're breeding out will be filled in. So you don't have to wait that extra day to make your animal happy. Now be warned, pillow charms do require silk. So you will need lunins for their silk thread resource, which you can then turn into silk in your loom that you can craft over on your farm. So if you don't have lunins unlocked, sadly you won't be able to use the pillow charms. Honestly, the pillow charm are not fully necessary it just eliminates one day of breeding when you're trying to raise your levels of your animals and that's it everybody that is everything you need to know about fey farm animals i want to know what animal is your favorite animal in the game let me know in the comments below what animal you want to see come to the game what if the developers were to give us 
an extra animal to put up in the mountains. If you could suggest any single animal, what would it be? Put it in the comments down below. Also, what is your favorite color that you are breeding out and what colors have you already bred out? My favorite colors are the pink and the purples and I am dying to fill up an entire barn full of pink animals and I'm nearly there. I absolutely adore it. If you want to share any of your screenshots of your animals or your farm, be sure to check out my Discord. We do have a share your farm channel over there where we'd love to see all your screenshots. In the future, I will be doing some farm tours so do head over to the discord to check everything out that we talk about in Fae Farm and not just Fae Farm we have tons of other cozy games that we play here on the channel so if you haven't been here before I do play Dreamlight Valley play Fae Farm obviously and tons of other comfy games don't forget to like the video guys subscribe to the channel ring that notification bell and until the next time happy gaming bye